Welcome in to another episode of Betting the Pitch. I'm your host, the real underscore G Warner, with a very raspy voice from 22 hours awake yesterday and maybe uh, a few beverages consumed. Uh, this is a La Liga podcast. Unfortunately, I missed the first match day of this return uh, from the Christmas break. Feliz Navidad to everyone listening in Spain. Uh, probably one of you, maybe, uh, everywhere else though. I appreciate the support. If you're on YouTube or Apple podcasts or on Spotify, please subscribe. Leave five-star reviews where you can like, tell your friends, do all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to go into the remaining couple days of this match day and then, uh, try to get out of here fairly quickly. The English premier league seems to be off until, uh, cup stuff, which is happening, but that's a while from now. Uh, there is, Syria this weekend, so I'll be putting something together there. France and Germany return, return in two weekends, so we've got a little while of just focusing on specific leagues. So um, to get started, I might as well pull everything up. I'm hopefully on Do Not Disturb, but I'm so good at doing that lately, I'm probably not. Uh, we'll start in Spain. As I just said, this is a Spain-only podcast. We'll see if anybody cares about Spanish soccer. It's a good way for me to, I guess... Uh, segregate the listeners to see if some people do actually care or they don't or separate is probably a better word to use uh, sorry we're live so we'll start with granada hosting Cadiz. currently granada a quarter goal favorite at home with more juice slightly on the road team Cadiz over unders two and a quarter it is juiced very heavily to under um and i think that makes sense based on uh who these two teams are and based on uh goals and the scoring that occurs in the league at this point um, I will be doing an ultimate best bet end of show, uh, I guess, amongst the multiple days that I'm covering. So stick around for that. Uh, also follow on YouTube um, and on, on Instagram, because you can see these uh, kind of a, a quick burst, if that's more of how you want to consume this content. Of course, I appreciate everyone being with me for like 25 minutes, which is what we're expecting on this episode. But I understand that not everyone has that much time or uh, can handle my jokes for that long. So um we'll start in that first matchup so granada i mean sitting at the bottom of the table uh they've already moved on from one manager now are trying their best to figure out a way to uh i guess climb up the table they have almeria who are behind them pushing them or propping them up essentially but bottom three go down in spain so that's a really big deal unfortunately um I'm not really a believer in Granada whatsoever, so seeing them as a, a home favorite is a little bit surprising. Cadiz are never going to get respect in this league. Apparently, they maintain their position every season, um, really from being a great defensive team that also can find goals. Now, they missed Conan Ledesma, their goalkeeper, in their last round, I think because of a personal matter. Uh, wasn't really announced, but David Hill is back up as a fairly competent goalkeeper, probably better than most in this league. Um, so it seems to me like that's a side I want, uh, quarter goal underdog. Yes. Uh, very, it's unlikely that they win. I mean, you see the line at, at plus two fifty one. less likely to, to win than draw, uh, but both those cover, I'm not really looking, I don't need to win a full unit on every bet. I think Renata are a team I want to be against. They're only going to be favored at home really. So this is kind of the only time to do it. Uh, but I like that quarter goal and I, I do like under two and a half or under two and a quarter as well. Um, Granada started the year as a very aggressive offensive team, basically playing the same way they did in La Segunda División uh, and really playing under a manager who kind of played the same way the whole time that he's been around. And I don't know necessarily that um, it's a, a terrible thing for uh, Granada really whatsoever. I think it's mainly that they're just not very good and uh, that's a big, big problem. They do have some good players in their team, but that's not always enough. Uh, and as for the under, I, I think I'm more worried about Granada, potentially their defense causing problems. Cadiz are, are, are an under only team for me. Um, and, and I think putting those two together maybe gets this number above two, which to me is way too high and doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, I like under and I like under uh, two. and I, I guess I like under two and a quarter. And I like the underdog, uh, the road underdog there in Granada in the early one on Wednesday. Uh, we do have Thursday matches, so uh, we'll just go through Wednesday's card, pick a best bet, and then a Thursday one, pick a best bet, and then combine, pick the favorite one on the ultimate best bet end of show. Uh, Celta de Vigo then hosts Real Betis in the next matchup. Celta, a quarter goal favorite at home uh, with all the juice on Betis on the road over under two and a half, juice very heavily to under. Um, not a lot of goals expected in this one either. Uh, Real Betis have really had no offense to speak of this entire season. It feels like every time they score is fortunate. Uh, Celta de Vigo with a disastrous performance uh, in their last match and are still in the relegation zone despite having one of the most famous managers in all of La Liga right now, uh, and Rafa Benitez. He has basically killed their offense to play defense, but they're not great at that. And their offense, I think, um, he probably didn't sacrifice it as much as uh, it sounds because Celta's offense was down, heading down the wrong direction anyway. 
Uh, but finding goals in this one's really hard to do. Uh, Real Betis are a better side. They've crashed out of the Europa League and fell, fallen all the way to the Europa Conference League, finishing third place in the Europa League. It was very disappointing for that club. Um, but they have more talent. They have more, to me, expectations to score. I'm not sure that they have the ability to put the ball in the net on the road as much. Uh, but I like the quarter of a goal that they're getting right now. Uh, I'm not as concerned about the Celta Vigo crowd. I think they're a lot more supportive in Spain than you'd see them in England or in other countries, really specifically England. But uh, I I feel like Celta's crowd is turning on their manager, and that's not a great sign. As for the total, uh, don't really see. I mean, Iago Aspas is the best goal scorer for Celta Vigo, but he's 36 going on 37, I believe. Um, has been in and out of the lineup lately, and uh, I think this is going to be a big defensive effort from Celta de Vigo after they fell behind 3-0 in their last match against Villarreal, and I think there's a lot to take from that, uh, that we see a motivated effort here, and I think really they're going to look to restrict a bigger club, a better club, one that plays in, in the continental competitions like Real Betis. So uh, I really like under 2.5 here. Uh, I feel like that's far too high, and I think it's based on Celta de Vigo, um, hosting a big name club, but Real Betis haven't been scoring like one. Um, though I gotta say, Celta Vigo are in such trouble and in, in the relegation zone that a quarter goal favorite for a team that if you draw, you win uh, half a bet, I think is enough for me to get involved. So I like the quarter of a goal and I like the under two and a half as well. Probably more worried about the number losing the number on, on the quarter and falling down to pick them because I don't really want to play pick on the road with underdogs. Um, but for the total, I mean, even if it falls to two and a quarter, I still like it there. Real Madrid then hosts Mallorca in a uh, big name battle uh real madrid just somehow finding a way to win down a man with 10 uh in the last final seconds on a header uh, against alaves on the road now they're home at the bernabeo they're going to probably dominate mallorca certainly in possession uh real madrid at one and three quarter goal favorite with the juice split both ways over under two and three quarters juice all the way to over uh, mallorca are going to go in and try to defend like crazy as much as they can they scored a lot of goals in their last match if i remember correctly uh, which was really unexpected but uh, they're going to try their best to keep this as low scoring as possible i'm hoping this will hit three uh we don't have that yet i still lean under two and three quarters at this point uh i don't really think i want much to do with the side here which does complicate i'm trying to if i want to back an under i want to also want to back the road underdog but big ones like this i, I generally want to think i mean my concern for the total here is that real madrid score too many and then cover the over themselves so that's why i'm kind of hoping this very juice over two and three quarters climbs to three um but from a mallorca point of view i'm not expecting them to have many shots on goal they're trying to Probably going to try to score certainly on a counterattack, but mainly on set pieces, which are low expected goal events and don't happen very often. So I, my biggest interest here is under two and three quarters, but I'm waiting for it to hit three. And I think it will before kickoff tomorrow on Wednesday, January 3rd. Uh, Girona then hosts Atletico Madrid in the big matchup on Wednesday. And it's a little bit of shame. I wish it was on a weekend day because it would be really glorious to put it in front of everyone instead of a Wednesday. But I guess early year, you know, it's a match day. So it is what it is. Girona currently a pick em with almost all the juice at home over under two and three quarters, juiced all the way to over. So Atleti have been an awesome team at home. They've been a little bit more, um, uh, They've, they've been a little bit inconsistent on the road, you could say. I mean, it's hard to win on the road for anyone, but one of the top three clubs that are trying to win this title. Um, and then Girona, of course, finding their way into this. Um, it's been incredible what Girona have done. Their crowd has been uh, seeing a lot of great performances and a lot of great comebacks. I don't know that's necessarily such a, a tough place to play or win. Um, so I'm interested in Atleti if they climb to a quarter goal underdog. I think that's probably my my the lowest I'll go. So I don't have much to do at Pickham here. And I just I fear facing or fading Atleti with a favorite here at home, just because I think Girona are, are clearly much worse. Their squad value is nowhere near the level of Atletico Madrid. And Atleti are a great road team because they're great at taking a, a lead and then sitting on it as much as possible. Maybe that allows Girona to get back into a match and potentially draw here, which I think would be a good re result for Girona as they're certainly trying to win La Liga because they've been in the lead, but they're ultimately, I think, just trying to get at a Champions League place. Um, for where this number is, I, I think maybe the under is my biggest interest here, but Girona are a very offensive attacking team. And they're going to try to score. And, and when they're ahead, they're going to try to score, which unfortunately that game plan changes nothing, no matter what the score is for Girona. And on, on Atleti's side, they're going to try to, to really kill this game. So I guess if you like Atleti, then maybe you do want to potentially play under here, especially if you don't have that quarter in the pocket before this game starts or kicks off tomorrow. Uh, but I think Atleti are, you know, they're a little bit Jekyll and Hyde, especially home. They're so good at home. It's hard to even come close to that type of level. But uh, I guess that's my interest right now is I'll, I'll put that at the under two and three quarters on my list. Uh, and for my best bet on Wednesday, I got to pick one that I like the most. Um, 
you know, I would love to have three on the Mallorca match, but I don't have that yet. Uh, might be available on some some other sites uh, as we're quoting Bet Online lines because I have uh, always worked for them. They've supported this podcast a long time, and there's a great uh, sign up bonus in the podcast description. Uh, good for a fifty percent first sign deposit bonus. So put in a thousand bucks, they give you five hundred or so. I think that's a, a really nice way to uh, potentially set yourself up because if you're using casinos money, it's the best way to, uh, to profit. And uh, I get a little bit of credit from them. So uh, hopefully keep this partnership going. So thank you for that. Check that link. There's also one for sportsbetting.ag, but I'll talk about that later. Um, I think for, so using bet lines active as of 543 central time on January 2nd here in new Orleans, Los, uh, I was going to say Los Angeles, new Orleans, Louisiana. There it is. Um, I think my best bet here is the Cadiz under two and a quarter. It's it's pretty juiced at the moment, but uh, I think that's the best place I want to be. It's a way to kind of support a Granada team that I think are playing a lot more defensively now than they did to start the season and a Cadiz side that will never leave defense behind. Uh, and I think no matter what, no matter who they're playing, whether it's a relegation side or whatever on the road, they're going to do their best to keep a clean sheet. And I think that points to an under in that Wednesday battle. Moving to Thursday, Osasuna hosting Almeria. Currently Osasuna, a three-quarter goal favorite with more of the juice over under two and a half. Juiced a little bit to under. So Osasuna, they have had some really poor efforts. Unfortunately, they brought in a lot of players to try to get into conference league uh, or to, to win the playoff to stay in there. Got bounced out by Bruges, who's a good, good conference league team, had moved on the Champions League last year. So maybe that's not too many demerits. But uh, I don't know if that's the reason, but it's kind of tanked their club. Or Osasuna have not been able to play anywhere near the defense they played before. They've not been able to score, which is usually a problem for them. But they brought in attackers and they thought where they were potentially going to solve that issue. But it hasn't happened. Um, they're pretty fortunate here as a three quarter goal favorite biggest they've been, and they do play really well at home at El Sadar, but they are hosting Almiria who are, uh, bottom of the table, had a really good performance by their standards against Barcelona, but ultimately they, I think are going to have to stay in this league or try their best. They need to win matches, which they haven't done. I don't think just to date in this competition, 19 or so match days in, uh, but they really need to defend. That's their biggest deal. And they haven't done a great job of that. This is a good opportunity to go to Osasuna and potentially play that type of game because Osasuna don't really have goal scoring. And so a three-quarter goal favorite feels gigantic. Uh, I don't know that I like Almeria until I get a full goal of insurance. Like maybe that'll occur by the time kicks off. it, it kicks off. It's still bigger than the number I made it, but the total is way, way high compared to what I was expecting. Um, so I guess I like the three quarters of a goal, but I'm more interested in under two and a half. I feel like it should be far lower and it's not really even juiced at the moment. So I'm, I'm tempted to see if there's some money comes in that comes in on scoring goals in this matchup. Cause uh, I don't agree with that market market take. Uh, next, we go to Sevilla hosting Athletic Club Bilbao. Currently, Sevilla, a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice over under two and a quarter, juice all the way to over. So, Athletic Club, they are a counterattacking side that are going to go and try to reverse engineer goals. Um, they're going to score goals by taking your turnovers. Now, Sevilla, they, I mean, got a, a big win and then did fairly well on defense against Athletic Club Madrid uh, in the rescheduled match right before Christmas. Um, I don't know necessarily that they've, I mean, on their fourth manager, I, I'm not a believer. I, I'm looking to be against them as much as possible. It does feel like the market's kind of flipped with them, or maybe they're just loving athletic loop here, but it's rare to see Sevilla an underdog at home, unless they're playing Real Madrid, like a quarter goal underdog is, is pretty much reserved for Real Madrid when they're in town. So uh, athletic loop, I feel like this is the peak of their uh, arc of the season. There might be as expensive as they'll be. They've been playing great, but the wins have been fortunate. I mean, their last victory against Las Palmas, um, they stole one at the end, though. Uh, certainly, I put a lot of pressure on Las Palmas the whole match, but I, I just don't necessarily believe in Athletic Club. And the unders have been a dream for Sevilla this whole season. Um, still rated, I think, as a team that are far, or at least rated far better than their actual team is. They got the big names, but I feel like they've aged. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of talent cohesion. And when you have four managers in a season, of course, that'll occur. Um, but the rod has started halfway through two seasons ago went through all of last year and it's still going this year so we're like two seasons deep into Sevilla being a relegation candidate in La Liga and I think they're getting too much credit so it's probably not worth it even though they do have a, a Brit like La Norvion I went there a couple seasons ago it's a pretty nice crowd uh, I went on a pretty off day they were playing the worst team in the league Levante but uh, scored five goals but it's a very different scenario when they're trying to fight out of a relegation battle they're maybe not that deep into it right now but it's not they're not that safe and only because they got a nice win over a bad team last week did, did things really change too much so uh i think my biggest interest here is to under two and a quarter and i think it fits because athletic Club still want to counterattack. 
Um, and yes, they should have some opportunities. I like them to win this match. Probably if they were an underdog, I'd play them, but don't have that option. So I think under two and a quarter is the best uh, option here. And we might get two and a half before this kicks off. Now, last but not least, before we get into the ultimate best bet, I'll go through Las Palmas hosting Barcelona. Now, Las Palmas, they want to play exactly the way Barcelona do, um, which is control the ball. And basically that's how they, they protect their defense. Of course, nowhere near the squad value, newly promoted side that there was very low expectations on. They've more than beaten those expectations. They're probably almost safe in the league right now, um, but they still don't get a lot of respect for the marketplace. Like, unfortunately, Barcelona are nowhere near valuable enough to be a, a one goal favorite on the road at Las Palmas. Giving that that push away on a single goal loss on a home team is just too much in the Canary Islands. Uh, I also feel like under two and three quarters is worth looking towards as well. It's a little bit more juice to over. I mean, Barcelona's defense has been pretty bad, but they're probably going to be stuck in their own half for a lot of the time uh, just because Las Palmas are going to take the ball and keep it. And I think Barcelona are going to try to do the same thing because they're basically playing the same style. And what that ends up doing is something like we saw in Serie A last weekend where uh, Fiorentina were playing, uh, I think it was Bologna. And, and literally th they both just want to have the ball or against Torino. They both just want to have the ball the whole time. And so that makes it pretty tough when that's the big struggle. It's not really trying to score. It's trying to who can have the ball and, and really play more passes. So I'm uh, very interested in the home underdog and also the under here, hoping this moves to three before kickoff. But there's a lot to like, I think, on, on this La Liga card after I basically played uh, an under, I think, in all three of them today on Tuesday. If you're with me on, on Patreon or on, on Twitter, you saw that. So check that out. Patreon.com says so the real underscore one of the best spot to get all my plays, um, write-ups, leans, everything going into the day. Uh, you can get a notification if you have the application. Um, get a buzz every time I lock something in. I make sure to, to alert my clients on there. And that's been huge. And I appreciate all my patrons. You're all great. And I'll think about something I could do to celebrate moving into 2024 with all of you still around. So uh, for the ultimate best bet portion of the show, though, I got to pick a best bet here. Um, so I think my favorite one is probably that under in Osasuna. Um, I do like underdog and the home underdog and the under in the Las Palmas match, but I think there's a little bit less likelihood that hits in both directions. And I'm not sure which one to pick or which one I like better. Uh, but I think this Almeria total is too high. Osasuna's offense has been really weak. Um, so I'm going to play that one and still look to play more in this league because I feel like there's money to be made on uh, expectations to score goals in La Liga that just really hasn't been happening or doesn't look like it should occur going forward. So uh, it's ultimate best bet portion of the show time. Uh, thank you for all the support. If you're on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, leave a five-star review. It's huge for the search rankings. I know it takes a little while to, to load, but as soon as I see a five-star review with some sort of comment there, I'll read it. Or if it's related to the college basketball show and the need for seeds I do with Ben, ben and Biggie's Ben. Uh, I'll have him read something if it's related to the NFL, which we've been, I think, seven and one the last uh, four episodes. So we're crushing it at the end of the NFL season, trying to get our way into a, a big playoff run as well. We should be doing a, a podcast, Andrew Schnicker and I, tonight. Uh, a underscore Schnicker on Twitter, S C H N I T K E R. Saw him yesterday here in NOLA. So we'll see what time he actually gets back to Austin tonight. But um, plenty of stuff going on there. So please continue to support. We really appreciate it. Um, and it's making, I guess us happy to see how many people are viewing our stuff. So that that's been awesome. Uh, please keep that going and, and please slide in our DMS anywhere you can let us know if there's, there's more you want to see. Uh, but we're 18 and a half minutes in, uh, I've already mentioned if you're, if you're not a member of sports betting.ag, go make a first time deposit. You get a, they double your money there. So even better than what they're doing at bet online. Um, but either place, both are pretty much the same line. It seems like the same. Uh, interface completely so go check that out uh, follow my uh, links and, and you'll get credit and I'll get a little bit of peace from what they're I guess paying out to you they give me something as well on top of that so use the casino's money against them that's the best way to do it best way to uh, keep money around there are rollovers involved but um, we're got plenty of volume if you're following me on and you're a patron right now uh, patreon.com so it's real just you want plenty of stuff coming out there uh, on a daily basis if you're looking for more action than potentially a one play a day that you're getting at pregame so check that out um for the ultimate best bet portion of the show as i queue up my video um so this is the real underscore g warner this is betting the pitch the uh la liga edition as that's all we have going midweek in the soccer world uh the european soccer world that is on wednesday january 3rd 2024 i like Cadiz under two and a quarter goals and on thursday I like almeria under two and a half 
uh, pretty low scoring league in Spain so far. But for my ultimate best bet, I'm going to go with that Almeria under two and a half goals. I think that number is a little bit more valuable or available, especially uh, if you're listening to this on Tuesday live, then you can probably grab both of these. Cadiz might fall a little bit. So I think I'm going to put you more towards the Almeria under two and a half. The bottom seat team in, in La Liga, bottom seat, I was going to say, um, they're trying their best to try to get their first win of the season. And the way they do that is by restricting goals. And especially after being pretty much embarrassed by Barcelona and, and how many goals they scored, uh, I think they're going to play a really defensive game on the road at Osasuna home team that plays really well there, but hasn't scored any goals this year to speak of. So play under two and a half in Osasuna hosting Almeria in the Spanish La Liga. So that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. It's a brief one, but uh, only so many matches to play in this, I guess, festive fixture period that seems to be going by the wayside. Uh, but I'll be catching up on everything else I can. And then uh, feel free to check out patreon.com. So it's real and underscore G Warner. Best spot to get all my plays, leans, write-ups, everything. And then, of course, follow me on, <laughs> follow me on Twitter, the real underscore G Warner. And I will talk to you all very, very soon.